Since we last met, the world has changed dramatically. The coronavirus pandemic has plummeted countries all over the world in an unprecedented, acute and deep crisis. For the EU, it is the biggest challenge since it was founded in the aftermath of Second World War. COVID-19 is first and foremost a severe health crisis. I'd like to take this opportunity to pay tribute to the health workers all over Europe for their relentless efforts to save lives. COVID-19, however, is also about livelihoods, and uh, the stakes are high also in this regard. Last week, in its latest World Economic Outlook, the IMF confirmed that we are facing the worst economic downturn since the Great Depression. This calls for urgent and decisive action. Citizens rightly expect policymakers to provide for the economic protection they need in these difficult times. Therefore, I would like to devote today's exchange of views exclusively to the comprehensive economic policy response to the COVID-19 on which we have been working intensively in recent weeks. It is useful to set the scene with a few numbers. The IMF expects global output to decrease by 3% in 2020, with the euro area economy contracting by 7.5%. These are staggering numbers, dwarfing those recorded uh, at the height of the financial crisis in 2009, when real GDP growth decreased by 4.5% in the euro area. The, the forecast of a close to V-shaped recovery with great uh, positive growth of 4.7% for the euro area in 2021 provides some comfort despite persistent uncertainty. The downturn and the recovery risks are unevenly distributed across the euro area. When the location of a business in the Union is a key factor for its ability to recover from the crisis, the single market is at stake. This implies that, if left unattended, COVID-19 would leave the, the socio-economic and financial landscape highly fragmented. Fragmentation would undermine the single market and the currency union. National governments throughout Europe have immediately recognized the severity of the situation and did not hesitate to inject massive fiscal stimulus in their respective economies. The latest estimates point to discretionary fiscal measures worth 3% of EU GDP on average and liquidity support through public guarantees and deferred tax payments worth 16% of EU G GDP. These discretionary measures, uh, fiscal measures, amount to more than 3 trillion euros. To enable national responses, decisions were taken to introduce maximum flexibility in the application of the EU rules, in particular in the fiscal and state aid rules by, European, by the European Commission but also by supervisory authorities and the ECB. Albeit significant and coordinated, national fiscal responses were constrained and uneven. If we stop here, it will not be a whatever-it-takes approach, rather a whatever-you-can approach. The difference in the capacity of national governments soon became evident. The immediate fiscal impulse was almost seven times larger in Germany than in Italy, though the prices has been harsher in the later. The pandemic is an external and symmetric shock. Overcoming it requires a strong component of solidarity to ensure an uneven treatment of European citizens and level playing field for companies. This message has been driving the European response. Early on, the ECB took the lead with its large-scale pandemic emergency purchases program of 70, um, 750 uh, thousand billion euros. The Commission proceeded to unlock and provide for full flexibility in the unused European cohesion funds 
and proposed making further use of the EU budget available funds. The Eurogroup has also done its part. Within the time span of only a couple of weeks, finance ministers managed to agree on a comprehensive economic policy response commensurate with the predicament we find ourselves in. This response consists of a series of proposals, which have been outlined in a Eurogroup report to the leaders. Let me talk you through its main pillars. First, the Eurogroup expressed support for the Commission's SURE proposal. This is a new European Union lending facility of uh, up to uh, 100 billion euros. It will be set up to finance short-term short -term work and other arrangements to mitigate unemployment risks. Protecting workers' jobs and incomes is a top priority. For us to have a shot at a, reco a rapid recovery, we need to keep people in jobs and preserve their skills. The Sure Landing Facility will provide an interest rate subsidy to member states requesting assistance thanks to uh, 25 billion of additional guarantees from member states. Second, the Eurogroup endorsed the proposal uh, of the EIB Group to establish a 200 billion pan European guarantee fund to provide targeted funding to companies and notably to uh, small and medium enterprises. To this end, member states will be committing another 25 billion of additional guarantees. The Pan-European Guarantee Fund will offer much-needed protection to European firms facing liquidity shortage and, importantly, help safeguard a level playing field across the European Union. I would like to stress that any potential losses incurred by this fund will be mutualized. Finally, the Eurogroup has proposed to establish an ESM pandemic crisis support precautionary credit line. This will build, will build on the Enhanced Conditions Credit Line, or ECCL, but uh, will be used in a manner adapted to the nature of the symmetric shock caused by COVID-19. This credit line will be made available to all Euro Area Member States from the onset, providing funding at favorable terms for up to 2% of their respective GDPs. This could sum to a total lending volume of 240 billion euros. Contrary to the old ECCL instrument, this credit line will not be linked with country-specific economic conditions. There is no backdoor conditionality. The only requirement would be for countries to use ESM funding for supporting domestic financing of direct and indirect healthcare for cure and prevention costs related to the COVID-19 crisis. This definition is wide enough for a country affected by this crisis to reach the 2% GDP mark in eligible expenses. Once mandated by the leaders, we will strive to have this credit line operational within a couple of weeks. While this tool is fully consistent with the legal framework, it is clearly very different from the, tip, from the type of financial assistance that was provided during the sovereign debt crisis. To highlight this, uh, let me say that there is no stigma attached to this. There is no troika. I'm sure that with a bit of time, everyone will come to see this as a valuable tool. Taken together, these three initiatives provide backstops for sovereigns, workers, and businesses worth more than 500 billion euros. During the sovereign debt crisis, it took us three years to agree to a similar-sized backstop for sovereigns. This time, we did it in two weeks. We have managed to mobilize these funds with no transfers or taxpayers' money involved. Together, the three backstops are a display of solidarity within the European Union, an attempt to level our emergency responses across countries to provide each and single European citizen the same level of protection regardless of the country he lives in. However, let there be no doubt that more will be needed as we face the difficult task of rebuilding our economies. This is why the Eurogroup agreed to work on a temporary and targeted recovery fund to kickstart the economy. 
It also recognized the central role of a re revised uh, MFF, the multiannual EU budget framework, th that this MFF could play in this context. The recovery fund would provide funding through the EU budget in line with EU priorities, such as sustainable development, the digital tra transition, and economic sovereignty. Crucially, it will ensure solidarity with the most affected members and help spread the extraordinary costs of the crisis over time. These two objectives are plainly stated in the Eurogroup report. They are a matter of consensus. This does not preclude that more discussions will be needed on the exact features of such a fund, notably on the issues of financing still, still differ. Some members have made the case for common debt issuance. Pooling resources in such a way would allow us to give a strong impetus to the recovery and avoid further straining the public finances of the most affected member states. While there are member states concerned with any form of debt mutualization, this does not mean they dispute the need for extraordinary measures to support the recovery. We should move away from the beaten track of old red lines and focus on whatever works to fix the problem. We need a sizable EU stimulus plan and a common solution to manage the ensuing debt burden. Beyond the financing, we also need to reflect about the tools in the budget that could best channel the funds. Put differently, how can we best spend the money that we are planning to raise? A possible part of our response is the Budgetary Instrument for Convergence and Competitiveness, the so-called BIC. I believe there is a strong case to reflect about its potential role and, naturally, to rethink its size. The BIC will allow for a form of shared governance, a degree of flexibility and complementarity with other policies, which seems appropriate in the present context. Member States could provide strategic guidance on the spending priorities and be involved in the implementation monitoring while fully respecting the competences of the Commission and the Parliament. What matters now is that we keep an open mind and continue aiming for a high level of ambition when it comes to the Recovery Fund and the next MFF. I welcome that the Commission is working on proposals to this effect and I have no doubt that we can count on the European Parliament's support in this endeavour. I have indeed taken good note of your call for an increased MFF and for recovery bonds guaranteed by the EU budget and focused on future investment. The Eurogroup will continue working towards the implementation and further development of its proposals, subject to the guidance we received from the leaders shortly. On a final note, I would like to add that rebuilding our economies should also involve making definitive uh, headway with the completion of the banking union and the capital markets union. I hope the current crisis will help to create strong political momentum for it. I intend to keep this eye uh, on the Eurogroup's policy agenda. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Centeno. I uh, 